What is it that separates the experts from the people who follow them? A lot of this has to do with Malcolm Gladwell's idea of deliberate practice. Um, and this comes from the, the research of Anders Ericsson. Basically, people who stay really focused and put a lot of time and effort into what they're learning tend to get really good at it. And if you don't put in that effort, if you don't put in the work, you can't expect to get to the same levels. So I want to talk about mentors. I've had a lot of mentors in my life. I've been fortunate in that respect. And I hope that all of you have had a number of mentors who have shaped you in your growth, whether they be teachers, co-workers, bosses, uh, younger people, you know, anybody can have that sort of impact on you by offering their unique worldview into your life. Okay, those, those, um, those diversities of experiences can help shape us and keep us creative and keep us thinking about things in a fresh way rather than just stagnating on the same thing over and over and over again. So specifically with mentors, I want to talk about how generous mentors are with their time. So the ones that have the impact on you, the ones that you remember as mentors, they put you first. Or if nothing else, they make the time for you. You know, I, I go in, you know, I used to live in Indianapolis, Indiana. I lived there for a long time. I worked at Indianapolis Fitness and Sports Training for a long time. I just went back and visited and I got a chance to see Bill Hartman, one of my good mentors. And he sat around for two hours after his work day and just chatted with us. And that, it's that level of generosity that causes the growth of the people around us. That's the pay it forward aspect of this. If he does that, then, you know, I'm, I'm inviting people to my house here in the next hour. I should probably start talking faster so that I can wrap up for them. But this idea of being generous with your time, it creates this abundance of results that we can then all experience. So even though I am giving some of my time away, the, the benefits are just tenfold, right? So I feel good about spending my time. I feel good when I see somebody who's learned something that I taught them. I feel great when they put that in action, right? And this, this idea of managing your time then. So to segue a little bit away from the mentors, why are those mentors so effective? Now, again, I think it's the time, but they have to prioritize their time. We're all short on time. We all have too much to do. You know, when I was uh, going through undergrad uh, in university, so I had somebody, uh, just a friend of mine, maybe even just an acquaintance, uh, he said, there are three things that you can focus on. You can focus on your family life, your school life, and your social life. Three things. You can do two of those things, but you cannot do three. And every time I've seen someone try to do three, they half-ass them, and they don't really do any of them. But I have seen people successfully slam dunk two of them. So school life is basically your, uh, your career life. Um, and, and for me, I, I can spend a lot of time kind of building a relationship with my girlfriend and I can spend a lot of time building up my business and trying to impact others in the way that, you know, I find motivating and rewarding. But I don't, I don't go out at all. I have to go to bed early because I can't stay fresh enough to think about those things. I, you know, I don't even hang out with my friends as much as I'd want. So, you know, occasionally we can get a pretty small group of us together and we can have really deep, meaningful conversation. It's, and it's very rewarding. But the thought of doing that every week or twice a week is overwhelming to me. I just don't know where I'd find the time. One of the things that, you know, to come back to our opening statement, what separates the experts from the people who follow them? 
it's this time, it's this priority. So if you have somebody that you aspire to be like, it's because they prioritize that aspect of their life. If you aspire to have the relationship skills of Esther Perel, you need to sit and think about and coach others in their relationship and yourself in your own relationship for hours and hours and hours every week. You need deliberate practice. Just like if I wanna get really good at uh, postural restoration institute techniques or um, DNS or whatever, you know, mechanic system that you like to subscribe to. If I want to get really good at coaching people getting stronger, I need to coach people getting stronger. I need to repeat these things over and over and over again. And so if you're fortunate enough to have a mentor who wants to prioritize their career and their impact on their either employees or mentees, I would encourage you to steer into it. I would encourage you to make the time because that opportunity is very rare.